Hello there, all of you absolutely lovely people. Once again, I am Dax, and today we are going to be talking about the Franz Barden cipher, or the supposed Franz Barden cipher. The first thing I want to point out about this video is that this video is actually for my own reference. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to be discussing things that other people have said about the subject. And I will get to personal experience on this after I have finally worked my way through all of Initiation into Hermetics. What we're going to be discussing today will be about things found in this book right here, The Practice of Magical Evocation. Let me hold that up a little bit closer there. This is the second book in Franz Barden's series, and it is designed to only be used after you have mastered the first book. You master the first, you become an initiate. This one here walks you through the next process. The story behind this cipher involves Franz Barden and Abramelin the Mage. Abramelin has a much older group of texts, but both of these wizards discuss the 360 entities who occupy the zone girdling the earth. The 360 degree part comes about from the 360 degrees in a circle. There is literally a circle around planet earth and there is a degree of that circle each ruled by its own entity. This coincides very strongly with the zodiac. So once again both Franz Barden and Abramel and the Mage describe these 360 entities who each rule a degree across the sky. However, Franz Barden and Abramelin give different names for these entities. And that has caused a lot of debate in magical circles. Once again, this is a debate that I personally am not yet qualified to take part in. Maybe I will be by the time you personally watch this video, I don't know. But at the time that I am filming this video, I'm not qualified to take part in that debate. However, even though these two magicians give different names for what appears to be the same or at least similar entities, there is a man named Emil Steinar, and I hope I am saying that name correctly. But anyway, Emil discovered that if you take the entities of the Franz Barden system and you go through this letter-changing code, this cipher, the names of the Franz Barden system actually become the names of the Abramelin system. So, according to Emil, they are both actually the same entities, it is just that for some reason Franz Barden chose to encode the names of his entities. Another thing that Emil discovered when he ran all of the names of the Barden spirits through the same cipher, he found that the entities suddenly were transformed into the names of stars. For example, the being Bunam, once again, I hope I'm saying that name properly. But the entity Bunam becomes Rigel. Lubiel becomes Sirius. And Abitzriel becomes Arcturus. All of these are dominant stars in the sky. And once again, the names of the Barden spirits in the solar sphere, when run through this cipher, transforms into the names of stars. And that's the basic idea behind this cipher. This is where the debate comes from. Now, the cipher that Emil Steinar came up with is this. A becomes E. B, as in boy, becomes R. CH becomes an H. D, as in dog, becomes an M, as in man. E becomes an A. F becomes a V, as in voice, G becomes a W, I becomes an O, K becomes a Z, L becomes an S, LH becomes an SCH, M becomes an L, N becomes a G, 
O becomes a U, P becomes an F, R becomes a T, S becomes an N, T becomes a B, T, Z becomes a K, U becomes an I, V becomes a D, W becomes a P, Y becomes a J, Z, H, or Z, H, depending on what country you're from, Z, H becomes a C, H, and Z or Z becomes a C. That is the cipher of Emil Steinar. Now, the question needs to be asked, why would Franz Barden encode the names of his entities? And I personally can come up with a couple of really good reasons why. First of all, he could be doing it to protect people who are not yet ready to do this work. Once again, Franz Barden lists his spirits and the sigils necessary to connect with them in the book The Practice of Magical Evocation. But you are not supposed to be getting into this book until you have mastered the first book, Initiation into Hermetics. It is very possible that the reason Franz Barden encoded his spirits, assuming he did, was to protect aspiring magicians from getting ahead of themselves and connecting with entities that they were not yet ready to connect with. Another reason that I can come up with why Franz Barden would do this would be to protect our emotions from the names of the entities. The Christian Church has a very long history of demonizing any entity that they do not approve of. For instance, if you deal with the fairy kingdom, if you deal with fairy spirits at all. To my understanding, very few fairies like the crucifix at all. It has nothing to do with Satanism or anything else. The reason why they hate the symbol of the cross is because everywhere these people with the cross go, suddenly all the local people start calling the local fairies evil. And look at things from the fairies' point of view. How would you feel about a group of people who masquerade around with a particular symbol who suddenly come into your home and start calling you evil simply because they don't approve of you? I personally would not like them very much. And so there is that aspect of it. If the church does not like you, if the church does not like what you represent, they will demonize you and call you evil simply because they don't want people listening to you. And I will admit that when you look at the names of the entities through the cipher, some of the names of these entities become the names of beings that we are taught from childhood to hate. So it is very possible that that is a reason why Franz Barden did that. He did that to protect our emotions from the names of the entities themselves. Now there is one possibility that I need to bring up just for the sake of being inclusive in this video, and that is, yes, it is possible that the Bardonian spirits are demons. I don't think that's the case, simply because the Franz Barden system, once again, I've mentioned this in another video, you can recognize how good or bad someone is based on what they leave behind in their wake. In Christianity, this is known as the fruit of the tree. A good tree will always produce healthy fruit. A rotten tree will always produce rotten fruit. And the Bardonian system appears to my eyes, at least, to produce very healthy fruit. So I really don't think that the Franz Barden entities are demons, but for the sake of authenticity in the video, I feel obligated to bring that possibility up. Another thing I want to mention here is that it is possible that there is no cipher. It is possible that the Bardonian spirits and the Abramelin spirits are actually two different sets of entities that occupy the same sphere. Once again, I am only theorizing here. I have not yet worked my entire way through initiation into Hermetics, 
so I am not going on personal experience. If anybody out there watching has personal experience, I invite you to type in comments below and talk about what you have experienced. But one of the things that Franz Barden does mention in Practice of Magical Evocation, and yes, I have scanned through the book, I just have not done any of the practices. But one of the things Franz Barden mentions in the book is that there are not 360 entities in the 360 degree Earth zone sphere. Franz Barden actually says that there are 720 entities. Each degree is not ruled by one being, it's ruled by two. One is positive, one is negative. And Franz Barden blatantly said in the book he will not give us the names of the negative entities. But there is a positive and a negative entity for every degree of the Earth Zone. Speaking purely hypothetically here, without any personal experience on the subject, it is possible that Franz Barden literally and openly gave us the names of the positive entities, but it is possible that the names of the positive entities and the names of the negative entities actually coincide in a way to where it appears to be a cipher. Once again, I'm just being hypothetical here. Well, anyway, I am Dax. I love every single one of you. Always remember, you are important. Your needs are valid. But the same is also true of everyone else. Everyone is loved. Everyone is important. And everybody's needs are valid. And in our society, we're taught to conveniently forget that. But let's remember, we're all in this together, my friends. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.